Hey. <laughs> it's been a while since I, I did one of these videos where I just kind of sat down and uh, talked about the things I like, but... I, it's what I want to do now, so it's what we're doing. So, the Switch 2 is eminent, as we all know. And we're seeing a lot of reports saying that we're going to be getting some news during September, maybe the weeks after September, first bit of October-ish. After seeing all this, I figured it would be smart if I got ahead, if we could, and kind of nipped this in the butt, because I need to talk about my most wanted games for the Switch 2. Now, there's a lot of games that I want for the Switch 2. There's a lot of games that people want for the Switch 2 in general. There's a lot of games that we thought we were gonna get for the Switch that we didn't get at all, that we might not get for the Switch 2. But be warned, this is incredibly biased. If you can look back at that shelf behind me, you can probably see where most of my biases lie. And I'm going to be talking about, again, the things I want. I'll give a little credence to some of like the really suggested fan stuff, but this is for me. This is a selfish video. Also, I'm not talking about Pokemon because Legends Zygarde is confirmed. So that's like no, no need to talk about it. On with the Yap session. So my first idea, obviously, is a new 3D Mario. We've had a new 3D Mario with every single console. I would say the exception being the Wii U because Mario 3D Land is like a 2.5. Odyssey was a release title for the Switch, so it is very likely that our next 3D Mario will be a release title for the Switch too, since we haven't had one in like, what, seven years? Let me look it up. Yes, yeah, Super Mario Odyssey came out October 27th, 2017. Judging that the Switch 2 isn't probably going to be coming out until the summer of 2025, that's over eight years. That's insane. Our main launch title for this console will almost certainly be a new Mario. And here is what I would do. So our game starts directly after Odyssey at Peach's Castle, where Odyssey ends. We see Bowser arrive, because his ass has always got to be there. And I think it would be smart, because he's currently stuck on the moon. Uh, during the events of Odyssey. I think it would be smart if he built some sort of teleportation device and that's how he got here. But he also used AI with this teleportation device. Eh, do you see where I'm going? You see where I'm going with, with AI and storytelling? So basically, this machine powered by AI gains sentience, it goes rogue, and it sends Peach, Mario, and Bowser through time. Basically, we have a time travel Mario platformer. We can fill this with tons of references to past Mario games, like Galaxy, Sunshine, there can be like Delfino Plaza shit, stuff like that. But we can also explore other things. Some of the ideas I had was something themed on the French Revolution, you know, like Mario drops into a giant cake, because like Marie Antoinette, you know, cake. Uh, an Indiana Jones inspired thing. The Wild West, uh, some th the Founding Fathers making the Constitution. How funny would that be if Mario was just there? Feudal Japan with samurais. Like a futuristic city. I think of that one gif that people use when they're like the world if like Mr. Beast didn't exist and, <laughs> and it's like the most futuristic cool city you've ever seen. I, my personal thing that I would definitely want um, especially because I was a young autistic boy growing around up around dinosaurs and Mario. Give me prehistoric Yoshis and my life is yours. Nintendo! Give me prehistoric Yoshis and my life is yours. Again, I said Delfino Island from Super Mario Sunshine. We can have the Conservatory from Super Mario Galaxy. We can have levels from Odyssey. It was still eight years ago. This, this is a long time. And I think something that would be cool would be if we could have like a 3D recreation of the original 2D Mario level, the first level of 2D Mario, like a, like a 3D two scale thing. I think that'd be really fucking cool. I thought it'd be cool if the time travel device for this game was the flag that you reach at the end of a level. So basically, once you reach a flag, it would send you to some other, the next level, but it would be a random point in time for Mario. Kind of like a Nintendo TARDIS. Am I, is that too nerdy? Halfway through, we're gonna have Bowser and Mario meet up and team up against the robot that Bowser created. I think that the Mario and Bowser team up in Odyssey was fucking awesome. I want more, I want more. You know, cool themes of AI because Nintendo's been against it. And I think it'd be really funny if the antagonist of this game was basically Nintendo's version of Am from I Have No Mouth and I Must Scream. Just like a, a truly evil thing or like Ultron, you know, like just like in fiction, these robots who gain sentience or they gain access to the internet for 0.3 seconds and they immediately decide that everything needs to go. But basically the game ends with everyone being restored, you know, as any Mario game would end. But I would like to finally have some piece of a Bowser redemption arc, kind of like what Kirby did with King Dedede over time. Kind of got weaned out of being a villain and he's more of an ally now. I think that, I think it would be cool if we could finally usher in a new era, era of Mario where Bowser isn't the only bad guy. And I call it Super Mario Timeless. 
yeah, those are my spitball thoughts for Mario. Moving on, Animal Crossing. I, I have a complicated relationship with Animal Crossing. Animal Crossing is maybe in my top three favorite game franchises of all time. There's never been an Animal Crossing game that I didn't enjoy. <sighs> However, quite unfortunately, my least favorite Animal Crossing game is New Horizons. I know, I know, shoot me. You can all shoot me if you want. I just, I didn't love the crafting. I thought the island gimmick was fun, but I thought it got old quickly. Granted, Animal Crossing being the main quarantine game also didn't help because we all had way too much time on our hands. But I would like a return to form. So our main gimmick for this new Animal Crossing game is to build a mega city. Not like cyberpunk, like full on futuristic, but just like, like a Tokyo, like a, like a New York city, you know, like a, like a huge mega city. We're beyond towns, we're beyond villages, we're beyond islands, we're building, we're building culture now. No crafting, please. Minimal terraforming, probably like some, but like minimal, you know, like you already have your land. No limit on villagers because of how big I would want this world to be. And villagers can be appointed to do city jobs, you know, like head of construction, realty services, and even political positions. And now this is where I get to Tom Nook's involvement. I don't believe we should be buying everything from Tom Nook again. I think it'd be funny if Tom Nook was kind of on the outskirts for this one until later when he comes into our city, like around mid game and runs for mayor. Now Tom Nook would win, uh, but the other positions in the mayor's cabinet could be assigned or won by any other villager. Have Raymond run for run for uh, secretary or something. Raymond versus Isabel. And then they have like a debate in game. How cool would that be? How th That would be cool, don't lie. Villagers can also interact with each other, which would make the relationships each villager can have even more real and more like invested in the world. I think skyscrapers, so like buildings with multiple, multiple floors. Better multiplayer, because New Horizons multiplayer kind of sucked. You couldn't really do much. If you were on someone else's island, like you could walk around and that was like basically it. I think it'd be cool if you could like play mini games with your friends, stuff like that. And I think the return of Dodo Airlines is necessary. I'm not sold on this name. I'm not sold on it, but we've had Animal Crossing New Leaf, Animal Crossing New Horizons. So I would want this to be Animal Crossing New Beginnings. Our next game, Kirby and the Forgotten Land was my favorite game of the Nintendo Switch era, like quite easily. I've always been a huge Kirby fan, but oh my God, that game was, Un it was unreal, it was unreal. So all I want, uh, nothing crazy, I just want this game again. I just give me another 3D platformer like Forgotten Land with some like little Souls-like mechanics. This time I would want the aesthetic to be somewhere closer to Avatar, not uh, the Nickelodeon show, the, the movies with the blue people, with like floating islands and stuff. We have ancient tribes of like Waddledees and like other enemies. I think, I think it would be cool if we kind of went along the same lines of Forgotten Land where it's like, okay, we're exploring now, you know? We're not just like finding new worlds. We're exploring these areas of the world that we already know. Floating islands would be really cool and then grounded locations. And I have an idea for the floating islands. Let me get to it. So each floating island would have a different property from a past Kirby game. Think Epic Yarn, Mass Attack, Robobot. Every floating island can be seen as kind of like a trial island where the entire level is centered around the mechanics from a past Kirby game. I, I think that'd be so cool. There's just not much to change and improve what they did with Forgotten Land. It was a pretty f perfect game. I just want more of it. And my concept for this game, concept title for this game would be Kirby and the Forgotten Isles. Again, moving along Forgotten Land, this is the Isles because of the floating islands and stuff like that. Next up, another quick and easy one, because again, it's already a pretty perfect game that I just want to see again. Give me Tomodachi Life back. Tomodachi Life was the best thing that came out of the 3DS. Just objectively, it was the best. I want the me creator from Miitopia in Tomodachi Life. That was the best part of Miitopia. The fact that you could create basically anything in that broad, wide me creator. Oh. Just more extensive personality features, more options for these characters to form in your world. Being able to have your friends' characters visit your town, I think would be really cool. You know, significantly bigger than the original game in terms of like random events, interactions that could happen, items, content, just all bigger, bigger, better Tomodachi life. But the biggest thing I want them to focus on is a community library. Community made items, decorations, and characters that you can just add straight to your world. Center the game specifically around community involvement and social media. 
Make this the game that everyone is trying to get their friends to play with them. Make this like, oh my God, let's all make our own towns. Let's show off. Let's let's share the funny moments that happen in my town. Share with me the funny moments that happen in yours. Let's have our towns meet so that there can be more funny moments. Just stuff like that. Like a direct, I don't know if this is possible. I'm, I'm daydreaming right now. A direct social media tie-in with account linking would be so cool for Tomodachi life. Especially if the characters could like react to your social media posts. I don't know, just imagine you have like Steve Harvey in your Tomodachi life world. And he's like, oh, I saw you endorsed Kamala Harris. <laughs> Here are some honorable mentions before I get to my last concept. Splatoon 3 just ended, so Splatoon 4 is imminent. I have not played Splatoon, ever. But I want to. Splatoon 4 will probably be the time I finally hop on the Splatoon train. I've been meaning to do it for the longest time. Uh, I think I'm finally gonna do it with 4. We had so many rumors of a 3D Donkey Kong for the Switch and it never came. So I want to finally get the 3D Donkey Kong game for the Switch 2. I think, I think it's overdue. We haven't had one since, what, the 90s? For Smash, I think I'm good. I would prefer if Ultimate carried over as like a legacy console and we just got a couple more DLC for Ultimate. I don't want a new game with a smaller roster. I feel like Ultimate, if we give it more DLC and just a little bit more love, I don't think it needs a new game. I think we can just continue Ultimate for the Switch too. That's what I would want. I would just want to continue it. And then either a new Mario Kart or a full Nintendo crossover kart game. So like Smash Kart. I have a separate video on that in the works. We'll talk about that another day. And now here is my riskiest, weirdest, and most off the wall want, um, because it's not an existing franchise. Well, it kind of is. But this is a game that probably will never exist that I want. We've had a Luigi standalone game. We've had a Toad standalone game. We've had a Peach standalone game. W Wario has multiple franchises. He has Wario World and WarioWare. Give us a standalone Bowser game. And here's the final kicker. It's set in space. So not only do we get a Bowser platformer, we get a spiritual successor to Super Mario Galaxy. Let's say Bowser Jr.'s kidnapped by aliens. You know, Bowser rebuilds his spaceship to go to space. And then he finds the abandoned observatory from Galaxy 2, the one that's like Mario's head. And the Lumas help him find Bowser Jr. Basically, the floating Mario head is remodeled to be Bowser's head. And he sets off, you know, he's fighting tons of enemies from the Galaxy series with the help of the Lumas, giving him like his abilities, I guess. Because he can already breathe fire and he's already like got the slash thing going. Uh, but I guess they could give him more. Galaxy 3 is one of the most requested Nintendo games of all time. And I think I've accepted that we're not getting it. However, I don't think the world of Super Mario Galaxy is gone. I think it would be really interesting for that to be the environment that Bowser goes in. I mean, come on, Bowser fighting the PD Piranha dinosaur? Come on. I think it would be really cool. I would like to finally have our standalone Bowser game. And I think it would be cool if we could have our cake and eat it too by putting Bowser in Galaxy. That's, that's about it. Most of my ideas, now that I'm realizing, uh, kind of centered around the legacy or making tributes to past games in the franchise. And I think that goes along with what my core thoughts of the Switch 2 should be. I think the Switch 2 should be a legacy console. I think they should focus on highlighting their successes and paying homage to the games that made their brand as strong as it is, while also pushing the boundaries of those titles and ushering in a new era. I want the Switch 2 to be the victory lap of how successful the Switch was and all the consoles and games before. Because after the Switch 2, we're probably gonna get a new gimmick. Knowing Nintendo, we don't know if it's gonna do too well. Sometimes their gimmicks flop, sometimes their gimmicks do really good, but we'll see. Judging that we're getting another good six or seven years out of the Switch era, I would just really like for this to be Nintendo's victory lap of, hey, here's everything we've done. Uh, here's homage to all the other games in the franchises before. Here's a bunch of titans of games. Uh, have fun. That's it for me. If you liked hearing me app, please subscribe. That's it. Thanks.